Okay, so I'm going to do a talk on how Varnam for Mac OS was made at the Force Act 2021. Okay, so my name is Subin. I'm a hacker slash maker, and I build a lot of projects. You can see my projects at subinstitute.com slash projects. I mostly volunteer for SMC, so on the Malayalam Computing. It's a force collective for uh, bringing Indian languages to the computers, uh, digital devices mainly. I, other than that, I volunteer for Wikipedia, Debian India somewhere, in some way, and KD community as well. And if you, you can follow me at on, find me on Twitter at SubinCB and Mastodon at SubinCB.com. Yeah, so uh, in this talk, I'll be talking about uh, Varnam mainly. So how Varnam for Mac OS was made, why, why it was part of the hackathon, how it won the hackathon, and uh, like what happened post the hackathon. Uh, I will be telling all of that in this talk. Pre-hackathon, the hackathon, and post-hackathon to summarize. Okay, so about Varnam. Varnam is basically a transcentration engine slash input method. So I can show the input method right now. So I have Mac OS Varnam here. You can just type Malayalam. So this is basically Varnam for Mac OS. I can type Malayalam here. Let's say. So basically, it's just an input method. So if I, if I can do it with any text editor, uh, on Mac, so I can just type Malayalam anywhere, browser, be Telegram, chat, anywhere. So that's basically what an input method is. So if I can go that by here, keyboard references, and I can add the Varnam IME into my keyboard, and that I can use to type Hindi, Malayalam, Kannada. It, it supports 10 other languages, but for now, uh, I'm, I only know Malayalam, so it's just Malayalam for now. So this is basically Varnam app. So this is what I made in the hackathon, and I'll be uh, telling you more about how it was made. So Varnam is not just limited to the input method. It's a transliteration engine. So uh, fundamentally, it's a transliteration engine. Uh, one of the use cases is input method. Other use cases is making games, for example. So Merdle, I mean, Wordle got popular last year, right? So there was a, there's a Malayalam version of Wordle. And that's basically this. So this is underneath Wordle. Uh, it's run using Varnam. So the transliteration engine of Varnam is used to Make the game. I guess I'll just play it for now. Uh, okay, maybe just in. Okay, maybe not. It's going to take a while. So uh, the other thing that I can do here is with Varnam. Uh, it's other use cases. It uh, mainly for translation. This is another use case of Varnam. So alert.ing is a Kannada English dictionary. So underneath the suggestions here, this suggestion is using Varnam for doing the translation slash uh, suggestion suggesting the words. And so it's, it's a self force. It, it's a it's basically mostly written in Go, so it's self forceable very easily. So this is a uh, the public endpoint that Varnam is using currently. So this is another API. Alert.ing is hosting it separately. So but this is a, uh, the public API. So this is being used in by some Kerala government sites as well for their typing uh, needs in the websites. So kite.kerala.gov.in is another user of Varnam. So underneath there are some internal applications they are using. Varnam as well. And so there are multiple use cases. So any kind of transliteration needs, you can use Varnam for almost anything. And yeah, so that's basically what Varnam is. Now for in this, uh, so basically it supports Malayalam. So this is like Maram in Malayalam, Tamil, and Kannada. And typing uh, transliteration by English to Malayalam is or the language is the goal of Varnam. Okay, so the idea of the hackathon. So the initial idea of the hackathon was to make an input method for macOS. Uh, previously, there was, I used to use Linux and it already had the Varnam IME. I made that and I was using it to type Malayalam on my uh, personal Linux machine. But after 2021, I got into a job and I got a work laptop. And the work laptop basically, it's kind of a work laptop, but it's kind of becoming personal because it kind of become a personal lap in a way. And I needed a way to type Malayalam but there was no way to type Malala. And because the user base of Mac is very, 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 very low in Kerala or at least in India, there is no much tools for typing Indian languages on Mac OS. And so my primary need was a tool to type Malayalam because I am very frequent on Reddit, r slash Kerala and other subreddits. Uh, there would be need to type Malayalam. And I couldn't, and I couldn't uh, do that. So, and there are no good input methods as well. Uh, there are other input methods in Malayalam. For example, Sonelega is a good example by SMC. Sonelega, but uh, to make it work on Mac OS, it needs Keyman. So that's another software. So Keyman is a popular uh, 
input method that's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. But that's a separate software. Sonalega was using Keenan as a separate layout to make it work. But that's kind of not entirely, de- that's entirely dependent on Keenan. Varnam can't be do that because Varnam is a transliteration engine on its own. It can't do that. So I thought I need to make this project because it's going to help me personally. So that's was the first motivation. And that's why uh, I built Varnam for Mac OS. So the need to type Malayalam personally was the motivation behind why I needed to make. So that's a fundamental part of why we make things. We make things for a problem. We th- make things with a motivation. And my motivation in here was to type Malayalam on my computer. So prepping for the hackathon. So this is for Hack 2021. I think that this was an online hackathon. And I, I already had a goal because I got my Mac OS, Mac laptop, I think 2021. Wait, the hackathon was 2022, yeah. 2021, uh, somewhere around July. And for six months, I couldn't type Malayalam. And after that, so I was set the goal as to make this for this particular hackathon and look beforehand how to go through. I mean, the, I, I wanted this hackathon to have an end product of this input method so that I can use it. Wait, when was the hackathon? I kind of forgot when was that 2.0. Okay, was that 2.0? Uh, 2021, yeah, 2021 November it was okay, and I had to look how to uh, get uh, the tools, the language. Uh, so, for example, in Mac OS, the primary language is Swift, and to make desktop applications, you need to learn Swift, and you need to know how to make input methods. So, most operating systems have a method to implement input methods. So, Linux for input uh, inputting in so making input methods, we use IBUS. IBUS is a, uh, the in, intelligent input bus that is made, primarily used for making input methods, engine slash. So IBUS is, uh, there's another one for in Linux that's called f 6 x Those are other engines for uh, typing input methods. So that's basically, so how do I make an input method on Mac OS for Mac? So the initial step that we're going to search for Mac input method and how to, so this is very basic. This is not programmatic at all. But there are other ways to get around that and to make a proper input method. So the thing is that input methods are mostly used by people that are non-English. People who don't type English usually make an input method for it. So you can find input method for Japanese and stuff. So Japanese, Chinese people, they have a proper GitHub repo or they have proper examples on how to make it. But the problem with that is their documentation will all be in Japanese or Chinese. So for example, this is uh, mostly their projects itself are in Japanese that I will get to later. So look, I looked beforehand the tools, how the thing that I'm going to be working on, uh, what should be the way to go through it, things like that. And the another thing of the hackathon, do you want to, so there are multiple ways to go around a hackathon. One way would be to learn stuff. You want to learn something new, you can go to a hackathon and you can learn the stuff uh, in on that day itself. The other side of it is that I had an idea already and I wanted to use it. Then I'm going to use this opportunity of this particular event slash hackathon and I want to ship a product. So I chose the secondary one. I wanted to ship this product because I have to use it for myself. So what better way other than using this 24 hours time limit uh, to ship a product? And that's what I did. The so in my case, the prep I needed to do was to learn Xcode, how that worked, how Mac software development worked, shift the language, and how Apple uses. It's a complicated setup to ship applications in Mac because it's uh, you needed Apple developer account and things like that. So I had to prep for that. So I think I took about two weeks beforehand hackathon to look through this stuff to know what I'm preparing for. The next obvious question would be to start afresh or not. Uh, in the sense that uh, there will be input methods already. In the case of Varnam, people have, this is not a first problem because typing uh, non-English languages is not a uh, new thing. Many people have faced that before. So uh, Japanese people have faced it, Chinese people have faced it, uh, Israel, any language you take, every other language has had the same problem. So you can just look for Mac OS input methods uh, with the language that you want and that will probably give you uh, some kind of GitHub, so just add GitHub to it. And that will probably give you some resources into it. So there's an input method topic itself. There we go, fully functional Chinese input method for Mac OS. Okay. There we go. So some people have already made it. And you can look that that as a reference. 
uh, there's multiple ways to go around that. And but the problem is to uh, reading. You have to go through the code written by other people. So reading other people's code and navigating around is kind of difficult because they might have different kind of standards and different kind of ways to uh, make the uh, code. And ex the good thing about that is that existing projects will already have solved the edge cases that you have never faced yourself. Because uh, input method has a lot of complexity. Complexity in the sense like it should be working on any other program. It should be having, uh, so they can say that I'm typing here and I if I press five, it should pick the word, the fifth word of the suggestions. Uh, this is a custom feature that I made. It wasn't already there. So there are other cases as well. You have, this is called a lookup table. This thing is called a lookup table. And there are ways to scroll up and down, I mean, moving up and down. Those all kind of edge cases are there. And in some programs, it needs to be uh, the alignment and everything that needs to be handled. So there are some edge cases when you're making input method. And it should be working everywhere, right? And all those edge cases might be already handled by the people who have made other input methods. So it's a learn, relearn kind of stuff because existing projects might have already went through that cycle and I don't have to do that again. Starting afresh has good things too. Uh, the good thing about starting afresh is that you don't have the core depth of other people. You can just start afresh and just, uh, just go with it. And undocumented code, uh, yeah, so that's the disadvantage that I mentioned in the first part. Okay, so in the case of Varnam, what happened is that there was already an existing project called Lipika IME. So this is Lipika IME. Lipika IME is an input method for Indian language. The code was really good. It was really easy to understand what's happening here. So it was made by Ratraya. So Ranganath, I think, is living in the US or something. But he made this input method to type, I think, him Sanskrit and Hindi uh, uh, for, his, for his use case. So this is a there is an active community for Lipika. And it has its own transcription schemes. It has its own transliteration engine and stuff. So I can use that and make it for Varnam. And this is written. Wait, this is this is GPA license as well. So it was really good for me because I can just fork it and then uh, uh, use the same license for my project. And Lipikia had its own transliteration. So theoretically, the answer would be to just replace the transliteration engine with Varnam, and it will just work. But that was not really the case because it was harder than that. It, it's not as simple as that. So I had to uh, grind a bit to look into this and it was kind of difficult uh, to replace the transliteration engine. And uh, uh, there were very difficult parts of uh, the project itself. And one way to go around that is to look at the other resources. So these are some kind, some of the other resources that I use. So there were some other people who write, wrote uh, how to write it on IME on Mac OS. Uh, there were uh, other tutorials as well, but it's not complete because it was very basic. And this was using, I think, C itself. I think this is C hash, right? Yeah, I think this was C hash. So it it had, uh, there were different resources, but not all of those resources were up to standard. In the sense, I can't use a single resource of that. I had to look at multiple resources and to figure out how Lipika was doing it, compare it, and then modify the code as I wanted to. And that kind of helped how to. Uh, make the Varnamayan. Yeah, so the purpose of the hackathon, you would have to write a bit of dirty code here and there. You can have to hard code some stuff, uh, but you ha if you, you have to fix it later and, and fixing it later would give you a good uh, long-term maintainability. So after the, I think I will show the updates on that. I believe I have four hack in 2021. Yeah. yeah. So there was updates that I posted here. So I will show you that. Xcode was a first problem that I uh, uh, faced one with. Uh, it's all drag and drop. That was very uh, new to me, like dragging, dropping, and building stuff. Uh, very unfamiliar that, that goes because I was using Linux. Apple's IME API was also uh, confusing. It was uh, like IBUS or Linux has a very different setup. Apple's IME API is also a very different setup. And then I think after a while, I think on the second day, I got it to work a basic and I just wrote this one text with it. Okay. But it was kind of erroring out. Uh, uh, and afterwards, I think I added Canada, make the settings apps. So there's a settings apps as well. So Varnam IME. Uh, no, Varnam app. Varnam app. So this is a settings app for Varnam. So in here, we can just choose to learn words. Uh, set the languages, shortcut keys, and to know the recently learned words, I can unlearn and just make it the app uh, uh, 
to unlearn words if I want. So this is the latest word that I wrote. I can just unlearn. So it won't show up in the dictionary suggestions anymore. And that's how the app got uh, built. And after that, the project won. And yeah, so the project won after. And after post the hackathon, I am using this software daily. I use Varnan daily and I didn't have to modify anything much. There were two version releases after. So the first release was on the day of the hackathon, so the final day of the hackathon itself. The first version was on November 14, on the day of the hackathon. Second version, I had to modify a bit. So this I think I did it on Christmas. And I modified the software to improve some uh, features and just fix some bugs. And I released that version. And post that, only one more update was required. The underlying transliteration engine was updated to V1.9. And after that update, there wasn't any more updates because the thing is really stable. It's working. I use it every day to type Malayalam. And yeah, that's basically how it happened. And a couple of people have, uh, I mean, not a couple of, 20 or 25 plus people are using Varnan for Mac OS. Uh, so one other thing that I noticed about this part is that you can, you can go to the varnanproject.com and install. And one thing that I learned uh, after I joined my workplace is that YouTube tutorials, video tutorials are really good. And uh, not like a uh, tutorial. You can, you can write the instructions here. And the instructions for Mac OS is kind of complicated because uh, there is no code signing because I haven't bought an app developer account. So there is no, uh, the code sign has to be done manually and stuff. But there's video tutorial. It kind of helps people to install it very easy. So this is a comment that I got yesterday right now. It basically says, uh, it works really well, appreciate. So there are people looking for to type Malayalam on Mac OS. So these people search on YouTube. That's their first point of search, how to type uh, Malayalam on Mac OS. And they will reach the video and they will get to know about this project. And yeah, so making videos and documenting it is a good way to uh, reach out. And yeah, so everything is stable at the moment. And there are like 20, 25 people who are, uh, that I know that are using Mac OS uh, version and I haven't heard in complaints yet. So if you would like to know more about Varnam, you can go to varnamproject.com. You can try it and download. We have a community on Telegram and Metrics. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this talk. Uh, you can contact me at uh, Twitter on uh, ChipNCB and you can contact Varnam Project in the airport page. You can see the Telegram group and Metrics group. There. So, yeah, so that's the end of it. Thanks.